Hey, folks. Welcome to Weekend Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This Weekend Technical Analysis video is for Monday, September 20th through Friday, September 24th, 2010. Well, folks, let's get into this weekend technical analysis, looking back at Friday, then we'll briefly look back at last week and start to project into next week. What could this market do? Where could it go? Are we going to see a move up? Are we going to see a decline? First off, you can see clearly on your chart in front of you the SPY from Friday. That is Friday's action. Very, very much sideways after the initial fall. We saw the markets gapping higher on Friday, a pretty significant gap higher after Research in Motion and Oracle both reported earnings that beat analysts' expectations. Expectations. However, no sooner did we bunch up against the 113.15 level than the market reversed down. We saw massive selling, a little bit of economic news on the disappointing side, and the markets collapsed back down to the flat line. The flat line again around the 112.45 level after you subtract out a dividend that was paid out on Friday. And again, the market from that point on went sideways. It went up a little bit, it went down, it went up, it went down. You can see just a choppy sideways action point as of the Options X weekend here. Again, we just cleared Options X last week. Last week was a good example of kind of the whippy trading and the crazy trading that can occur on an options X. Analysts, we know what they're saying right now. They're saying bullish things on the market. Do we believe them? Not so fast, folks. Bottom line is, you have to understand exactly what's going on in this market. You want to be sure that you go against the overall sentiment. A lot of times we're seeing some bullish sentiment come out and the markets will drop and then bearish sentiment, people start to panic and the markets will go up. Understand the sentiment sides of the market. That I can cannot stress enough is such an important role in today's market. Now again, overly bullish sentiment is starting to creep into this market. We have to be aware of that. Do I think it's going to play out Monday or Tuesday? Probably not until at least Tuesday afternoon. Why? Because you have Monday, Obama's town hall meeting. Very tough for the market to fall when Obama's going to be speaking during market hours. In addition, what you have on Tuesday is the Federal Reserve meeting. Interest rate decision and their speak will be released at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Be aware that that most most likely will keep the markets quiet Monday and Tuesday. Maybe a little bit of gyration, but nothing major. And then starting on Tuesday afternoon into the remaining portion of the week, that's when you become, you start to get into that fire-breathing dragon part of this market. Where things can happen, things will most likely happen. We're through the holidays, we're through Options X. Volume should continue to return starting on Tuesday afternoon all the way through the rest of the week, and we will get some volatility. That means good trading, folks. Bottom line, that means whether you're a swing trader or a day trader, we cover it all in the research center in the intraday stock chat, you will be in luck for some volatility, which means money-making plays. All right, so I encourage you to join the research center if you're a swing trader. Uh, if you're a day trader, you should be in both probably, but definitely the chat room. Now, looking back at last week, folks, this is just a great example of kind of the crazy trading on Options X. The market went sideways after a gap up on Monday. Monday, we had a gap up here, and from that point on, you could almost draw a line straight across from the gap up. Just draw it straight across, and you end exactly where we were at that point by Friday. So again, you saw the market kind of whip up and down, but for the most part, from what we've seen, the volatility in this market, it has stayed in a tight range and a very, very unusual trend where we're just going sideways. Now, generally speaking, you would look at this sideways momentum or sideways action and say this is bullish consolidation all right now if we look at the 60 minute chart you can clearly see this 60 minute chart of the SPY which again mirrors the S&P 500 clearly shows a sharp move higher over the last two to three weeks but then what we're seeing here folks is the market going in a sideways manner just over the last really week in time which again this is bullish folks up sideways action now the one caveat to this is oftentimes you'll see consolidation bull flag patterns fail at the highs of charts so you want to be a little more careful if you saw this pattern down here for instance and it was like this and we were at the low end of the chart you'd be looking at this as an 85 percent to 90 percent winning success trade to the upside because it's at the upside of the chart at the high end of the recent chart, you want to take a little bit off that probability and probably move it down to about 50-50. And that's where we're really going to get into this key action, looking for what the market shows us Monday and Tuesday on the lighter volume until we get through the Fed. And then after the Fed on Tuesday afternoon, really watch the markets closely to see where this thing could be headed. In addition, the other thing I'd like to point out is while you have a macro bull flag here, the up move, which I just erased, the up move sideways action, if you zoom in a little bit, you do have a little bit of a micro bear flag right here. The sharp move down on Friday 
Bradley and sideways consolidation. So micro bear flag inside a macro bull at the high end of the chart. And again, use your probability techniques. If you don't know them, you need to join the research center. We give it all to you, the psychological aspects of the market. We give you swing trades. We give you analysis, guidance, education. It's all in the research center, $49.99 a month, a steal of a deal for the money that's being made. All right, now let's go to the daily. We want to take a quick look at the daily. The daily, again, has a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders, but remember, the inverse on the S&P is not transparent or not seen on the Dow. So that is a problem as well. Yes, the inverse head and shoulders is generally bullish, but be a little careful here. Would I be surprised if we broke a little bit higher and then failed? No, not at all. And again, this Monday-Tuesday action, depending on how light the volume is, could tell us that we float up a little bit. It would not be surprising to me, considering the bullish sentiment out there. But again, we're following that Fed on Tuesday afternoon, and that's really where things get start, start to get some action. That's where I think we'll get some good volume in this market. The volatility should increase. We basically, as I said, had no volatility. If you look at your daily chart right here on the SPY, which again mirrors the S&P 500, clear as a bell, the gap up on Monday right here, and then the rest of the week you went sideways. By the way, this level right here, the blue line, have I've had that line in for our members for literally months at this point. All right, that line has been in there. We've called it the major level. Believe it or not, when we called the turn to the upside, we nailed the low on this market to the day, as well as the high pivot right here to the day. And again, another turn is coming up. But after we nailed both of these levels, and again, this one to the upside, we called the upside move off of this level right down here. This is the target. This was the ultimate target I said it could probably get to, and we have achieved that level. Could it go a little higher? Yes. Why? Because again, you have light volume Monday, Tuesday of this week. There's always a wild card play there with light volume based on how the market generally trades on light volume, plus the Obama effect and the pre-fed effect all right if we do go higher these are your levels on the upside if you start to break down this is going to be your level on the downside and again watch for the turn we want to be very aware of this stuff folks we want to be very kind of keyed in on the key moves so we can position ourselves accordingly over the next week or so the action will continue to get better and better now let's go over a couple other key charts first of all let's take a look at oil the uso on your daily chart what is that showing again one thing i pointed out to my premium members you have an in spirit of bear flag i called this out about a week and a half two weeks ago in spirit of right into the 50 moving average you started to break lower now oil technically is at a little bit of support so you may see a little bit of a pause here but ultimately it looks like a bear flag playing out to the downside whether or not it pauses for a couple days who knows but it does look like there's a possibility of a little bit more downside in the short term on oil maybe over the next week or two let's go to the dollar the dollar again has been under a lot of pressure last week early in the week we saw some massive fall also keyed in on why the market goes up remember market goes up in the opposite direction of the dollar so if the dollar's dropping like it did last week early remember that was when we got the move in the dollar in the markets on monday the gap up on monday if you go back to monday we had a steep breakdown in the dollar we came right into support and then just went sideways the rest of the week which again the market Markets went sideways as well. Remember, markets go the opposite way of the dollar in general. I'd say with about 90% accuracy, you will see the opposite tick in the market. Dollar down ticks, markets will uptick slightly. All right, you are at support, but you're making a little in spirit of bear flag. If you break this level, double bottom here on the UUP, which again is the dollar index. If you move up, this is your resistance right here. Now, I want to go over a couple other things, folks. We want to put the charts up of the SPY again, and we'll just float through a couple other things here. Uh, that's your chart again showing the last five days in the market from the gap up on Monday, sideways trading the rest of the week. Uh, but the other thing I want to just go over is some of the economic news this week that we need to pay attention to. Uh, Monday, really not a whole lot. You got your NAHB in market index number coming out at about 10 o'clock on Monday. Tuesday, uh, we'll be looking at some housing starts, building permits, and then by the afternoon, that's the key right there, folks, FOMC rate decision at 2.15 p.m. Eastern time. They're not expected to budge on interest rates, but it's their verbiage. What are they saying? Are they going to buy more treasuries? Are they going to loosen this? Are they going to put more money in work in here? Are they going to print more money so the dollar gets depreciated? We see a drop in the dollar. The market could go higher. All these are possibilities. Wednesday, crude inventories, not a lot going on on Wednesday. Again, but the market could be action-packed after the FOMC meeting on Tuesday. And Thursday, initial claims, continuing claims. And obviously, uh, on uh, Thursday, we have existing home sales leading indicators as well. Friday, durable goods, new home sales. So there's a fair amount of data this week, some very key data. But again, watch the market. Try to be a little on the slower side Monday and Tuesday. Watch what Obama says as well. If Obama says he'll work with the Republicans on tax breaks and continuing these tax breaks, right now it doesn't look like they're eye to eyes that Obama wants to raise it on the upper earners while keeping it low, uh, keeping the Bush tax cuts on the lower earners. The Republicans say that's not going to float. If they can somehow agree on something, you could see the market go higher, especially if they keep the tax cuts across the board. That could be bullish for the market on Monday. Watch for that in the speech. I don't necessarily expect it, but it's always wise to be prepared just in case. Again, the Federal Reserve, the verbiage on Tuesday, that's going to be key as well. All right, folks, one more thing. Join the Research Center. Bottom line, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Check it out. 
out what is included. You include everything listed under Research Center. It's two, four, six, eight pages of data, of swing trades, of watch lists, of videos, updated almost daily there. You have to be on point with that. That's what you want, $49.99 a month, inclusive of everything. doesn't matter where you sign up. Your month begins from that day, and you'll have your 30, 31 days following that point uh, before you have to renew again. It's a fantastic value. Also, if you're interested in live analysis, trading, anything like that, join the Intraday Stock Chat. Check, check it out. You can go and look it up on the Intraday Stock Chat page at InTheMoneyStocks.com. All right, folks, I'm ready to make some money less week. Next week, let's do it up. We'll be doing it right at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take care.